Okay. So um, I'd like to call the September meeting to order. Um, at Wednesday, September 11th at 6.30. Um, and can we have a roll call, Kurt Poets? Sure, Supervisor Hewitt? Here. Trustee Page? Here. Trustee McGovern? Here. Assessor Trowbridge? Here. Commissioner Young? Here. Thank you. And then uh, Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, I was in the yeah, okay. 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 okay, and then digitally, I'm looking for any responses. We do not have any responses for public comment. So public comment has been met. Um, next, we have the update from the 70, um, from the 708 board, uh, from board president Yosh Yamanaka. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Yosh Yamanaka, reporting for the Council <laughs> Board. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the Township for financing us for the first year and a half of our existence, and I am happy to return $31,260 for the Township supporting us for the first year and a half. In January of this year, we announced that grants were available to support behavioral health and developmental delay programs. We received responses from 17 agencies providing providing services for residents of Lyle Township. 19 programs were proposed, and after interviewing, our board decided to award $750,000 to fund 14 of those programs. However, because we rejected about $400,000 of proposals, we have another $100,000 that needs to be dispersed. Accordingly, we have opened a supplemental grant period through September 23rd in order to select two or three more programs. Be happy to take your questions if you have it. Why does the money have to be dispersed? Why does it have to be dispersed? Mm -hmm. There are plenty of programs uh, that need need services. But there's no legal, ethical obligation to disperse all the money, is it? Uh, you know, we're, we're sitting on taxpayers' money, and I don't think the taxpayers want us to sit on the money and collect interest while there are mental health problems which need to be addressed in the pension. You could lower the tax next year. That's a possibility, but you know, mental health problems are only increasing, especially after COVID. Got a lot of problems, uh, especially with um, uh, students in junior high and high school. We have eight year old and 12 year old children attempting suicide. And this problem is not going away, it needs to be addressed. Any other questions from the board? Thank you so much for your um, for your returning of the funds and of the lead uh, the land meeting and thank you so much, Mr. Yamanaka. Um, okay, then next we have discussion and possible approval of the draft audit of the fiscal year 2022-2023, and um, everybody has in their packets um, the board memo. Um, Township. We have Martha here from uh, Sikich. Um, Township Interim Administrator Jim Marino, do you have, do you want to start off the discussion or? 
Well, this was discussed, as you know, at the at the August 14th meeting. Um, there were some comments and questions by the board um, based on that. Martha made some changes. She also provided some additional information that wasn't in the initial draft, um, which is the management discussion and analysis, auditor's communication, and the management representation letter. So that was added. Um, she made some minor uh, edits, and that's what's before you tonight for consideration. Um, Mark was you know, on the meeting to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Martha, do you, do you want to add anything in particular? Uh, sure, I can just highlight the, the changes that were made to the annual financial report draft from what was presented at the previous meeting. The management discussion and analysis, this is a piece of the annual financial report that is prepared by the township. Um, this is a, a great piece of information to read through to it provide some additional context to the basic financial statements themselves. Uh, so what it what it does is it highlights some of the, it provides some comparative information to the previous year audit and provides some analysis uh, related to fluctuations from prior year and explanations from that. So that is a portion of the annual financial report that is prepared by the township and is inserted into the audited financial statements. I sent out an email to everybody. Um, um, I, I'm not entirely sure that Martha is done. So it could be oh, no, pure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Martha. I can I can address questions. Okay. Then Highway Commissioner Young. Yeah, I sent out an email today. I, I didn't get this until well, I guess it was supposed to try to, but I was out of state. And so, so I didn't have a chance to look at it. I, I, I don't know when the township had a chance. Uh, the revised drafts were provided after the previous meeting. I believe they were sent out uh, August 23rd. Well, I didn't get it. It wasn't sent to me. Okay. I don't know who you sent it to. So it went. But it wasn't shared with me. Okay. It was shared with the, the township supervisor. Okay. Well, somebody chose not to forward it to me, so I didn't get it. And I was out of town. I left out of town, and so I didn't get a chance to see it. I'm still concerned about the $113,000 prior period adjustment. Um, and I, I, I say that, may I call you Martha? Absolutely. I say that, Martha, because the only thing on the balance sheet from the prior year is cash in $22,000 in liability. So what the prior period adjustment, I think, has to do, and perhaps you correct me if I'm wrong, it has to increase the cash balance. And so cash in regards to the prior period adjustment, I do understand your concern, and, and I acknowledge that. Um, I believe what, what I tried to related to that so as part of our audit procedures our audit scope is over the fiscal year that is presented in this annual financial report so for the fiscal period ended march 31st 2023 as this is our initial audit with the town of the township we do audit the beginning balances however we don't go back years and years and years to determine where discrepancies that we're finding were began. So essentially from our audit testing, what we were unable to do, and this is based on the lack of reconciliation processes at the township, township from prior years, we were finding discrepancies between what was presented in the previous year audit reports as compared to what's in the township's accounting system. And as you may be aware, I know that, and we are aware the township has Throughout the course of our audit process, uh, there's been turnover and the township has reached out and uh, consulted with some additional accountants, outside accountants to provide some additional assistance for the township. So we're aware that, and we were working closely with the outside accountants to determine what was the cause, to see where these discrepancies were related, what these dis discrepancies related to. And unfortunately, that information on a detail level, we couldn't determine that it's likely going years back as there had not been reconciliation of any audits to the township's system for some time. So without going back years and 
determining what the discrepancies truly relate to and and we've asked for that information there hasn't there's been no reconciliation of that nature done by the township of the books to the audits so that's why the prior period the prior period restatement is restating the the net position of the township we're not certain what portion of it impacts cash balances it's probably years of issues of of reconciliation issues of things that are going unreported in the system or basically there's that uncertainty on our end without going back years and years and doing a more extensive reconciliation, which is way outside the scope of a, an audit, which is yeah. what we are conducting. I can appreciate that, but um, I was led to believe that at the beginning balances, the bank accounts were reconciled, the cash. So if the cash accounts were reconciled, then how can it be not in this year or not in the year you're on? We were, the information that's in, presented in the annual financial report, we are prepared to issue an unmodified opinion on those balances that are in this report. Anything related to the restatement, those prior audit audited years, we have not audited those fiscal years and we have not completed reconciliations of prior fiscal years. So we don't speak to that. We're looking at strictly the balances that are presented in this audit report. We've, based on our audit testing procedures, we've audited the balance sheet, we've audited the income statement. So we're confident with the balances that are, as they are presented in this annual financial report draft, for the current fiscal year. The restatement relates to prior balances and difficulties in reconciling the audit previous year's audit to the township system. To be clear, Martha, is it an additional 113,000 or is it a subtracted 113,000? The restatement is... But that's got nothing to do with it. The it's restatement an, is, it is an increase in the fund balance. So that's a that's an improvement in the township's fund balance that was previously not reported in the township's fund balances. As to how what it pertains to or what year the discrepancies began, if it's multiple periods, if it came up at arose at some point in time, we don't have those reconciliations. Those are not reconciliations the township has completed with in working with the township's accountants, they were not able to resolve those discrepancies either based on the information that they reviewed as part of the accounting services agreements. So, and our opinion is over this annual financial report and the activity for the fiscal year ended March 31st, 2023. You would agree that if, if that, that, a port, that an adjustment would be necessary to the cash balance for the opening balance of your financial statement? We are just discussing the adjustment being made to fund balance. We're not adjusting cash balances. I understand that, but it, there's got to be an offset someplace. Yeah, it's got equal credits. And there's three things on the balance sheet, fund balance, payroll liabilities, and cash. The payroll liabilities were $22,000. So if you make a $113,000 adjustment to fund balance, the only thing you can adjust is cash. The adjustment is listed in the board communication. So you could see how that impacted the different balances. That's essentially the adjustment was needed in order to agree the system balances to the audited balances. And that remaining discrepancy is what is hitting fund balance. So that's the prior period restatement. I, I'm going to ask the trustees to defer this one more move and let me go back and look at that reconciliation of the cash balances for the prior year at the year end. But I do have some other comments with respect to what you presented with the uh, management discussion and analysis, the minor nits and nats, if you will. Um, uh, so as I noted, the management discussion and analysis is prepared by the township. So if you have any changes to that, you can uh, uh, make those adjustments and send that over to us for us to incorporate into the final report. Okay. Is this one? 
I guess my question is, is Trustee this McGovern. Normal? Sorry. Is this normal? It seems like a a gross oversight in funds. Is this uh, how you townships because of government accounting rolling or there are definitely issues at the township with reconciling audit reports to the township systems and that's a large part um there's segregation of duties issues these are noted in the board communication and had been discussed throughout the course of the audit there was difficulty for in the township providing us certain reconciliations and certain audit support um all of this is noted and discussed in the board communication in terms of recommendations that we have, uh, improvements that the township could make regarding these, what we call material weaknesses and significant deficiencies, which, which are issues with internal control processes that result in possible misstatements to the financial statements. Essentially, those are uh, what we call material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. So if if there's a lack of internal control processes, if there's a lack of review of reconciliation, or if there's inf insufficient number of individuals having their hand on review and reconciling procedures. So for instance, if there's only one individual making adjustments, there's no oversight of that, There, that results in a risk that the financial information whether due to fraud or error, uh, human error occurs as well, or an individual becomes overburdened and doesn't have the capacity to complete everything on a timely basis, that results in these discrepancies and or a risk that there are discrepancies that can result in misstatements of the financial statements. And this was many years happening. Um, and as we all know that there was some cleanup that needed to be done over many years. And this is cleaning it up and moving forward um, in a way that Ladabak and Amin and Janice Tapas um, have helped us point out um, the need to do. <laughs> Any other discussion? Who wrote the MDNA for the country? I drafted the initial. I got a question on, on note 20, I mean, on page 20, other post retirement benefits. Uh, MDNA is on pages, it runs through page MDNA. Uh, note six, other post oh. retirement benefits. Six. Not page six, no. Are you referring to the financial statements or the management discussion and analysis within the financial report? The Oprah Oh, so that's within the footnotes. So that's that's part of the the audit, yeah. basic financial statements, the footnotes. I mean, normally in, in, in that situation, there's an actuaries report they go through the liability. Typically, yes. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have a problem that we didn't do that. Uh, so it was discussed at the start of the audit during planning, and we were made aware that there hadn't been an actuarial valuation completed. We did receive health insurance information, enrollment information, and utilized a, a similar sized entity for comparison purposes to determine the value, the uh, estimated valuation balance. And what was that estimate? Do you have it? Uh, I don't have it on hand. Um, however, I can state that that uh, those balances are also not reflected in the uh, cash base, modified cash basis financial statements, similar to IMRF. That would be a footnote disclosure only, so there would be no impact on your financial statement balances. But it would be footnote disclosure with respect to the liability. If it was a considered a material liability, it would be a footnote disclosure. Well, I'm I'm looking at Addison's financial statements for 23 and they were in the same situation and they had one an active member currently receiving benefits and the change or the balance of the liability was two hundred thirty one thousand dollars Addison would be in a similar situation that we were in and it's 
I guess I was surprised that that's considered not material. Uh, I'm not sure what year that evaluation for Addison that you're looking at relates to. 23, May 31st. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at a similar, uh, we used a similar entities valuation with similar health insurance population to the township at March 31st, 2023 for our comparison purposes. And did you, did you look at the plan document itself for the health benefits that were provided? Uh, we looked at the health insurance information, the insurance policies, Blue Cross, the Blue Cross Blue Shield information for our, our testing purposes to gauge the estimate. One was a highway department employee, and he would be covered under a United plan, not Blue Cross. That's all I have. Thank you. And um, by delaying this, this would uh, further delay next year's audit? Correct. We, we wouldn't be able to begin the subsequent fiscal year audit until this audit has been closed out and the books have been closed to reflect the audited trial balances. Um, does any discussion, Trustee Page yes. or Trustee McGovern? We realize we just made a comment that time is of the essence in this situation. Um, my first thought was, uh oh, we don't have two trustees here. I'm not I'm not really? comfortable with the results of the audit. And I hope that you know in future years um, we improve as township. Um but that is my discussion that it has been presented at last meeting. I think everyone's aware, and I think that I feel comfortable passing this. At this time, we've done so much recovery accounting. Yeah. I can't imagine paying for more and and getting any more answers. Um, would it's you difficult to swallow, but yeah. I, I Would you like to make a motion then? I would like to make a motion to pass um, the annual um, draft or the, the draft audit of the fiscal year 2022-2023. Thank you, Trustee McGovern. I don't see how delaying it would benefit the township at all. The issue that was brought up last month was corrected this time. I second the approval. Thank you, you Trustee to Page. Changes to the MDMA. And we can make changes to the MDMA. Um, any other discussion? And a roll call vote, please. Trustee McGovern? Yes. Trustee Page? Yes. Supervisor here? Yes. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Good night. Okay. Discussion and possible action on the previous year's financial reportings into Thompson and Reuters. Um, we, uh, our interim township administrator, uh, Jim Marino, do you have, do you want to start this discussion? Well, I, I sent an email out to, to the board earlier. I know there's been some, uh, comments and the desire for discussion about uh, moving away from Thompson and Reuters and going back to QuickBooks. My only comment in the email is that I would suggest you may want to table it for now, discuss it in October. We've got two trustees right. that are absent. And then uh, Kelly from Lauterbach and Amy should really be you know, participating in discussion. We tried to get her to participate today. Her schedule didn't allow, she wasn't available. Yeah, so it, that. yeah, I you know, there certainly needs to be a discussion about it, but it will probably be better to do it next month. I'll make a motion then to table. Um, to, uh, can you just take those phones? To, I'm sorry, to I learned I, <laughs> I should know that I learned that from Ross. <laughs> make a motion to postpone agenda item seven and I seven discussion of possible action on the previous year's financial reportings into Thompson and Reuters software and number eight discussion and possible action regarding the, the direction to staff on accounting software. Thank you, Trustee Page. Second. Thank you, Trustee McGovern. Any other discussion? Um, and I will point out that uh, the PDFs and the Excel spreadsheets from previous years have been added um, and put into a, a 
a file so you all could view them. Um, and then a roll call vote, please. Trustee Page? Yes. Trustee McGovern? Yes. Supervisor Yes. Can I ask, Jim, um, so that we have some reasons? Sure. Did you? No, I can't. I thought you asked if I no, could. You didn't. You no. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And then the accountant's report. You all have it. Any questions or discussion? I guess I Trustee McGovern. Um, how many vans are the pantry van? Is that in operation? Yes. We have two. Well, there's one um there's one cargo van, there's the um refrigerated food pantry truck. Okay. And the truck can take obviously pallets of food, and so we often are using it for the pallets of food that we can. So they're both being used? Yes. Just depending on the load that day. Okay. And if we wanna, if we don't have any other questions, Um, we could go to the audit of bills and claims until controls are going there out. Um, I would like to make a motion to enter the audit of bills and claims. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee McGovern and Trustee Page. Any discussion and a roll call vote, please? Trustee McGovern? Yes. Trustee Page? Yes. Supervisor Page? Yes. Um, I wasn't there. Okay, where? So there they are. The bills, the, yeah, the everything. So we were with Jacob. It was Trustee Geist and I. Um, some of the items pulled, we already had amended. Okay. So, but yeah. there's still some issues. There, there, well, there's seven items that were addressed and taken care of. Uh, the one thing we wanted to add on that as discussed was a secondary motion to um, regarding a Young's reimbursement. So it's specific. You can just read it. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, you read it? Yeah. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve check number 51406 for the Highway Commissioner's um, reimbursement on professional development. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee McGovern and Trustee Page. Any other discussion on that one? Anna roll call vote, please. Um, Trustee McGovern? Yes. Trustee Page? Yes. Supervisor Hewitt? Yes. And then going back to the original motion. Um, I just wanted to check in on the check number 51367 for Liberty Mutual. Is that located? Can we get a motion and then a second and then we will do discussion? Oh. Sorry. Oh, I thought we had already done that. Mm -mm, no, no, okay. okay. Just kidding. Um, I would like to make a motion to uh, discuss the audit. Of, approve. Approve and the yeah. audit of expenditures. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee McGovern and Trustee Page. Now we're in discussion. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> so 8,000 check. We have that for Liberty Mutual. Uh, do you run up the site? <laughs> there were some things that were missing. So I'm just trying to see what happened during the course of the day today. There was a copy made. Of votes. Is this the check that's allocated 4000 for the road district and 4000 for the county? I did notice something odd about that too. The bill was sent to the supervisor. Right. Was sent. What? Why? Because why was that? How could that be? Because it's to me personally, I'm guessing I don't know why it was sent to my home. 
it was a prior years that were sent to the pension. I can double check prior years. Yeah. You want to see it? Yeah. Yeah, because we couldn't see it yesterday. Because everything they have all of my personal information. This is the bond, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um the next item was we had a coding issue. That's been corrected. I think I believe we sent that on. Okay. Um, and then I just wanted to double check on 51431, JMR Consulting was missing a signature. Diane, uh, Supervisor Hewitt. Yes, that came in at the back. last minute. And do you have that one too? Yeah, it was signed today. Okay. And then. Um, Ed Young, have you signed two checks today? One for Vonage? Yes. That is missing a signature. And ComEd? Yes. And it was under the wrong account. Um, so it was under the supervisor's account. Do we have separate, the ComEd? Was that the bill in question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that gets, I don't know how that address got changed either. Okay. It, but it's, it's for the, I think it's for the interview. For the interval or the gap? No, is that is there an address that needs to be changed or? Yeah, we'll okay. take care of it. Okay, that's the only thing I wanted to draw to the board's attention. And the only other thing on the list was the DuPage County Collector that um, oh. we owed $8,577.16 for the second uh, installment. We were late. Um, but uh, Supervisor Hewitt, I said the check and Supervisor Hewitt went out there and got the, the late charge rate. So, but, so we don't have to pay the late fee. That's good. And it's paid. I do have a question late. about what happened because we did have a special meeting to get that rolling. So uh, it was originally, I think, sent to the wrong address. Um, and we didn't know about it before the previous meeting. Um, there was a holiday involved. Um, and I mean, I think that's what was part of the delay. Um, and so by the time we got to it the next time, um, it was already late and the fees had already been attached. Um, so that has all been resolved. Well, what do you mean by that? Because we had the meeting and we approved it for payment. So what do you mean? Because the check was in front of us. So for example, um, I don't print any checks. I haven't ever printed any checks. Um, it's generally the accountant that would do it when they, the next day that came up when the accountant was here was a week later uh, because of Labor Day being on Monday. Um, so uh, Jim was off those days. So there was a variety of things that happened where we had a holiday, um, we had staff that wasn't here because there was a holiday and because it, there's only so many days that Jim uh, works at the township. So again, that has all been taken care of. Okay. We were just, you know, we just had a special meeting okay. specifically for that. We added other things on to the meeting because we were having the special meeting, but that was the, the sole purpose for having Thanks, that meeting. Yeah. So I think it's just confusing that, and the idea was that we were not paying late charges. We know it came late, but that's why we were having the special meeting. So it, it's just, um, this is not the first time, this is the second bill that's late for the for the taxes. So, um, you know, we, we did everything we were supposed to and we still, almost got charged. So thank you for getting it waived for us. Okay, and it's all been taken care of again. Um, does anybody have any uh, other discussion? What, what are you going to do about the address? How does it change? So I, trustee I trustee. spoke to the, um, to the treasurer's office. They said they would change the address to where it's going to. So no, this is for the insurance bill, for the bill that went to your house. So, um, 
I will again talk with the insurance company and make sure that it goes to um, the township in the future. But I think it went that way. I don't think it, I think it's always gone to my house. Um, I do recall this in the past um, that it went to my house before. Um, Trustee McGovern. I'd like to make a statement that I think it is appropriate for all um, professional uh, mail correspondence be sent to the office. Absolutely. Without, you know, we, we are not work at home employees. I know we review our packets and everything at home, but I think it's really important to have anything that, that uh, deals with the township to be sent to those offices. Because we pick up our mail yes. here. You know, that, that should be very uniform and standard. Okay. Um, any other discussion? I can say I don't pass bills for the eight thousand dollars because half of it's mine. It's always going to the township. It's never going to. Okay, we can double check that again, and I'll have a conversation with the insurance company as to where they decided to send that. I never asked for anything to be sent to my home. Okay, um, do we have a motion? Then we do, and so can we have a roll call vote, please? Um, Trustee McGovern? Yes. Trustee Page? Yes. Supervisor Hewitt? Yes. Okay. Um, item number 12, discussion on possible action to approve the maintenance plan with CENTAS, um, highway, or, sorry, uh, Interim Township Administrator, Jim. You have in front of you a uh, service agreement with CENTAS. CENTAS um, is responsible for conducting annual inspections of the uh, fire alarm system in the building here. Um, and they did that uh, this past year, but there wasn't a agreement per se so i asked them to provide a one-year agreement to do what they've already done but just this kind of formalizes it um, so this is what you have here as it indicates on uh their proposal they test the fire extinguishers um the emergency lights the exit lights make sure the lights are working the battery backups are working they'll replace battery backups um do any maintenance so that's what this um, this is for I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the maintenance plan and contract with CENTAS. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee McGovern and Trustee uh, Page. Can I uh, thank you, Priscilla? Um, there was just two things that I want to mention for later on, since you said it has already been this work's already been done. I was just looking at the terms and condition. Just one thing, if there was a late payment, it has 1.5% pursuant to the local government prompt payment act. It should be 1%. And then additionally, for litigation purposes, it has a state of Ohio, governing law has a state of Ohio. Um, so we would recommend future, that should be Illinois, because we're in the state of Illinois. Um, but those are just my two recommendations moving forward. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Priscilla. I was on the computer, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> How could you read? Like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely I, I, I had the digital copy. Thank you. Um, with those um, amendments in the future, and then um, any other discussion and a roll call vote, please. Trustee McGovern? Yes. Trustee Page? Yes. Supervisor Field? Yes. Um, motion passes. Then discussion and possible action to approve the purchases of a pallet of. We're actually going to um, not move, not move on that one because it appears that we that it would be underneath. The need to come to this board um, by having half of a pallet. So moving on to the discussion and possible action to approve the maintenance plan with Croke Sons for HVAC. Bessie Page. Is it possible to use the consent agenda or omnibus for 14, 15, and 16? And then again, 18, 19, and 20. These are maintenance issues that right, we don't need to have like deep discussion. We discussed this already. We're aware. Um, does anybody else have an issue with that? Can we change the agenda like that? Yeah, you, you just need to. You would. So we just it. have to do. Each. I mean, unless you want to read them all together, like I move, I move yeah. to approve. Yeah. Of, uh, I would do that. Agenda sure. number. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I, um, do you have the months? So that's what's they're like. in each one. Yeah, that's yep. another. Yeah, I got it right here. Okay, perfect. Okay, ready? I know. <laughs> I move. Well, I'm. I'm going to collapse it into a, an omnibus first. Is you can. Okay. So I'm. I'm. 
we're going to use the omnibus to approve 14 item agenda items number 14, 15, and 16. 14 discussion of possible action to approve the maintenance plan with propane sounds for HVAC. And that would be for an amount of $1,852. 15 discussion and possible action for Crope and Sons to perform the maintenance plan for the mini split AC units in the food pantry. And that would be for $1,250. And 16 discussion and ratification of the replacement of the HVAC unit in the food pantry and the return of parts. <laughs> and that is 13998 Correct. $13,997. Thank you, Trustee Page. And a second. I second. From Trustee McGovern. And then any discussion? And then a uh, roll call vote, please. And Trustee Page? Yes. Trustee McGovern? Yes. Supervisor Hewitt? Yes. Next is discussion and possible action to approve a proposal to provide project management and bid package preparation services for the township office window replacement project. Um, Trustee Page. Uh, I'll make a motion to, well, wait a minute. I'm gonna ask the question first. Have, has the windows in the entire building been inspected? Have we had anybody here to inspect everything? Uh, Jim, when you say inspect, what do you mean? Like you have a contractor come and look at at the windows at each window and determine how bad a shape they're in. The contractor came out, but only to to provide um, the proposal you have in front of you okay. to determine what their cost would be to prepare the bid specs. It wasn't somebody that inspected the um, the operation of the windows. If that's what you mean, okay, that was not done. Yeah, that was kind of all right. Thank you. Uh, uh, Trustee McGovern. And this is covered by our, just to clarify, by a grant Apparently. capital part. Yeah. So can I hear again the, the portions of the grant or the portion of this payment that will be covered by the grant? Well, the grant, so it's a legislative appropriation. Mm -hmm for $60,000 mm -hmm. for capital improvements, mm -hmm. which the uh, township had previously designated they were gonna use it to replace the windows in this building. Mm -hmm. So it, it's $60,000, it's a reimbursement grant. And in order to get the reimbursement, uh, application has to be submitted to uh, DCEO because they're processing the grant. Mm -hmm. And part of that application process requires that you submit a budget with estimates of the cost of the project. So by soliciting bids um, and getting those estimates, you would use that to select a contractor at some point to replace the windows. And you would also use that estimate to complete the grant paperwork. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's what we're asking our Renaissance maintenance to do is prepare the uh, bid documents so we can get the cost estimate. I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposal for Renaissance maintenance to provide uh, project and bid management services for window replacement at the township office building for $7,400. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee McGovern and Trustee Page. Any other discussion? And a roll call vote, please. Trustee McGovern? Yes. Trustee Page? Yes. Supervisor Hugh? Yes. Motion passes. And then discussion and possible action on the proposal from Renaissance Maintenance to purchase keyless door locks for two doors. And Trustee Page. I'm going to make the same request. Can we collapse 18, 19, and 20 into a consent agenda? And I will read it if everybody is in agreement. Thank you, Trustee Page. Um, I'd like to make a motion to um, discussion of possible item number 18, discussion of possible action on a proposal form from Renaissance Maintenance to purchase keyless door locks for two doors. Number 19, discussion of possible action on proposals to pre replace the light bulbs. And number 20, discussion and possible action for the electrical work in the food pantry. Second. Thank you, Trustee Page and Trustee McGovern. Any other discussion? Yeah. Uh, Jim? Well, uh, replacing the light bulbs, item number 19. Well, there's two, there's a scale. Yep. Well, no, yeah. this is... This is what's here is um, four options. Yeah. So 
you have to determine which of the four options. So you, you want have. me to work for my money? <laughs> so it make, might make more sense to go for each one for this. Okay. Sorry. Do you want to just go on number 18? Okay, sorry. So do you have do an you opinion? Do you want to just take out 19 then? Or just try Yeah, to 19 would be the one. Let's so amend to 18 and 20. Okay. So make a motion. For, you made the motion for eighteen and twenty, but make it make it. I'm sorry. Make it for just. I would just withdraw your motion. I will withdraw my motion, and now make it for eighteen and twenty. Right. And I will remake a motion to discuss item agenda items number eighteen and twenty. Thank you, Trustee Page. Do you have an opinion on? Which way to go? And a second from Trustee McCaffrey. Second. Thank Sorry. you. Trustee McCaffrey. And then Jim, please. For 18 and 20. So 18, 18 and 20. 20. Oh, sorry. Uh, so then we can go with the, any other discussion for 18 and 20. Yeah. And then uh, roll call vote, please. Third call. Trustee Page. Yes. Trustee McGovern. Yes. Supervisor Q. Yes. Yeah. Now we need a motion for 19. I'd like to make a motion to discuss um, the pros and cons of replacement light bulbs for the supervisor's office. Thank you, Trustee McGovern. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee Page. And then um, we're in discussion. Jim, would you like to start the discussion? As I indicated here, and as you've seen in the building, there are several fluorescent light bulbs that are out, a total of 55. And we have talked a while about it, a while ago about you know, bringing the um, maintenance company to take care of these issues. Renaissance Maintenance uh, was selected to, to do that. Um, so they provided a cost proposal to replace the fluorescent bulbs with fluorescent bulbs. Um, so that's one of the four options. The other option is to replace the fluorescent bulbs with either LED bulbs or LED um, light fixtures. Uh, I talked to ComEd about that because ComEd offers incentives if you replace fluorescent bulbs with LED bulbs. And they referred me to a company that is certified to do this work and applied for the incentive through ComEd, and that is Green B. I met with the owner. He came out and provided the proposals that are in your packet. Um, so that's really the decision, which of these four options you want to go with for replacing the bulbs, either with which you already have, LED bulbs, um, a retrofit kit where they would replace the entire fixture with an LED light fixture. Um, the last option here is the same option with the retrofit kit. It would just add a light and control like a motion detector. So... Obviously, there's a cost difference between these. Um, the amounts for replacing uh, the lights with the LED bulbs is about half what it would actually cost because this is after the ComEd incentive. To get that incentive, you have to apply to ComEd. Um, this cost would include Green B filling the application out to get the incentive, um, doing the work, doing the installation, and all the materials. So it's a total cost for everything. What is the timeline on this from Green Bee? I don't have an exact timeline um, from him. I think it would just be a matter of, you know, how long it would take to get the materials. But I don't have an exact timeline. So as I indicated here, there's, you know, pros and cons to each option, you know, one versus, you know, the least expensive option, of course, is to replace the bulbs with the is currently there, uh, but that means you know, they're not energy efficient. You're going to be replacing them more often. Of course, going with LED bulbs is more expensive, but they're better for the environment, and you're not going to be replacing them as often. Trustee McGovern, may I ask a question of Highway Commissioner Young? Sure. What are your bulbs and your? Let me switch them all out to LED. Okay. I think it's important that we're equitable in our buildings, so. Um, what I would prefer, I would recommend the LED bulbs and definitely applying for the incentives through Green B. Option two. Option two. two. Yeah, the LED bulbs. I would agree with that. Any other discussion? Okay. Just, just, right. So this would be replacing the bulbs themselves, not the entire picture. Correct. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so you would like to make that motion then? I would. I'd like to make the motion. Number two. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. Number yeah. two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would like to make a motion to approve um, option number two in replacing our current fluorescent lighting in the supervisor's office with LE bulbs and utilizing incentives from ComEd. A second in the amount, sorry, in the amount of in the amount, the quoted amount prior to incentives is three thousand one hundred sixty-one dollars and seventy-one cents. Did you say that one more time? Yes. Three thousand one hundred and sixty-one dollars and seventy-one cents. Thank you, Trustee McGovern. I'll second. And Trustee Page. Any other discussion? In a real public, please. Trustee McGovern? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Supervisor? Yes. Just because that's, that's a cost after the incentives. That is a cost after the incentives. After the incentives. Okay. Thank you, Anne. Township Administrator. Um, next, we have discussion and action on the search for an interim uh, Township Administrator with Dov HR. I would like to make a motion to interview interim township administrators, but outside of GovHR as well. Can we change that to be GovHR and any, because I know there are other government agencies um, that have temp administration. And I, I believe at this time we have exhausted GovHR's database of replacements. Potentially. Okay. Full-time permanent, yes. Okay. For a while. But uh, Mike Earl, who was our rep, well, you were involved yes. with that. Yes, you He was, I haven't yet. Okay. Um, I was waiting for the meeting tonight. Um, it sounded like there were plenty of options for temporary. Okay. Part-time. So we could start there, but I, I agree with you, kind of like expand. Yeah, I would like to include this to read. Um, you know, interviewed interim township administrators with GovHR and other similar government <laughs> government um, placement agencies. placement agencies. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee McGovern. I'll and second. Thank you, Trustee Page. Any other discussion? And a roll call vote, please. Uh, Trustee McGovern. Yes. Trustee Page. Yes. Supervisor. Yes. Um, next is discussion and action about the proposed start of the email digital township monthly newsletter. And we've um, um, thought about this for some time. Um, and here we go. And uh, after looking at the decennial committee, it does sound like there's quite a appetite for more um, communication. Um, so at the October meeting, it would be in the packet. MailChimp would be the software. Um, does anybody have any other um, suggestions on this for the proposed procedure? And so this is, yes, uh, Trustee. I would actually suggest postponing this decision until the October meeting because we are short almost 50% of our board right now. And we've had some issues with the email in the, I'm sorry, with the, newsletter in the past, I, I feel like all of us should be involved in this discussion. Okay, and nothing is really being even voted on. So um, you would be getting the option in October to be voted on. So anybody in the meantime can you know have influence and then in October you can vote it down or not, um, but it's just starting this discussion and setting that expectation. I'll give you my opinion. <clears throat> Okay. Um, next is discussion about an action about the timeline and details. Uh, for Wait, I'm the, sorry. Are we doing a sorry? We're postponing. No. Well, there's not a there's not really a motion being done because it really doesn't even need a vote. Um, we're just discussing, you know, the potential for this to happen, and we've discussed this for okay. months, um, years really. Um, discussion and action about the timeline and details for the proposed mailed pa um, paper township newsletter. Um, so, and this would, I mean, if you all want to delay this one as well, um, I mean, this is 
this would be the start of the newsletter. We didn't do one in the summer like we usually do. But we had been traditionally doing, this would be the third one that we did as a group. Um, so at the next board meeting, the idea would be that the draft um, of the of the um, mailed annual newsletter would be out. Um, and then for review until the next November meeting with it being the 13th, and then it being ideally released on the 14th. So this is ahead of the holidays. I'll make a motion to review the draft of the annual newsletter in, at the October monthly meeting. Thank you, Trustee McGovern and Trustee Page. Um, and then any other discussion? Yeah. And then a roll call vote, please. Um, Trustee McGovern? Yes. Trustee Page? Yes. Supervisor Green? Yes. Okay. Um, the supervisor's report um, has that we were, um, we served 2,038 people in the month of August. We, I worked with the Church of World uh, Crop Hunger Walk, and we will receive donations for their walk on October 20th. Um, it was very generous of them to um, come to the township. I gave them a tour, and they will be giving us a, a generous donation. Um, GA cases had $15,980 um, worth of rental assistance and 11000 or sorry, Total general assistance was 15,980 with rental assistance being 11,387. LIHEAP starts again October 1st. Um, and there were 16 RTA registrations. Transportation had an increase in rides to 210 um, with the total cost average um, getting more affordable. Um, last month's cost average was 3892 uh, per ride and $5.11 per mile, which is getting better. Um, the passports, there were 47 passport applications this month. Uh, George has been fully trained and is now able to drive on his own, which is doing, which is very helpful. Um, as you can see with the grant um, timeline, the clerk, um, the county clerk, or sorry, the township clerk has the documents that we signed um, with the county to agree to what they had proposed. And we did get the $500 uh, from the shred day and then working to get the bids for the windows so that appropriations from the state can be submitted and you pass that. So the, they're moving on. Um, that's a supervisor's report. And then we have minutes from the regular board meetings. I'll make a motion to um, approve the 814, the August 14th, 2024 Lyle Township meeting minutes. Second. Thank you, Trustee Page and Trustee McGovern. Any other discussion in the roll call vote? Uh, Trustee Page? Yes. Trustee McGovern? Yes. Supervisor Hewitt? Yes. Any other old business, uh, Trustee McGovern? Um, well, in the audit of expenditures, we were looking at some fees on Republic Services. It is huge for contaminated recyclables. Um, I don't know if we need to stress with volunteers or Jordan or have signs. We're getting billed, what, what was it this month, 800 $800 for dirty boxes. And we are shortly ending the, the contract with them, which I'm hoping will enter one that is a little less punishing, but it's the driver that's marking this down. And we just have to be more careful because it's costing a lot. And we are, we have reviewed it with the employees, but we get the new dumpsters on Friday. Um, so Soon. that will, I would, I would, I believe that this will be um, this next month. There'll only be a portion of the, of uh, the month's um, bills would be from them. So next month would be the very end of those type of charges. I would love to request a retrain though, kind of like a you know, in-service yeah. to avoid those fees. 
Well, we have done that, George, okay. done that with his okay. volunteers, and we have put signs out on the, the doors reminding them, you know, only place recyclables on this side and waste on this side, don't mix them. But the key change with the new uh, bins from LRS is those two bins out there, both of them are two yards. Mm -hmm. So then it's not big enough. Two yards big enough for the waste, but not big enough for the cardboard. Mm -hmm. So with LRS, we're getting a four yard a dumpster. So that should eliminate the problem with having excess uh, waste in that dumpster. And a lock, is there, was that part of it too? Is there gonna be a lock on the doors or a lock on the bins? I think, no, I think it may be on the, well, uh, Katie Just was supposed that. to check on that. I have to, yeah, she, when we met at the meeting, she said she was gonna check on that. That was supposed to be included. Okay. I'll, I'll check. Thank you. That's all I have for new business. I got nothing. Thank you. Uh, new business is the elected official, and this is not to be decided right now. It's just to be presented as um, this is what um, needs to be decided in October uh, for elected official salaries. And there's a graph, um, a PDF in your packet with all the township um, similars. It lists, and highway about that graph, the list of the highway commissioner gets so I don't mess with true. I do not. It's oh. a possibility though. Isn't well, that the others aren't true? I mean neighborhood certainly is. I mean, I'm not I'm not quite sure what it is, but I don't get it. I just don't get it. Okay, so you're not taking it, but it is a, I mean, isn't that partially because of your age? Meaning that well, any... I don't think age has anything yes. to do with collecting yes. or participating in that. Yes, it does. I've been told that at the age of 60, that nobody is allowed to receive that benefit. Nobody over the age of 60 is allowed to participate in IRMF. That's, That's what I've been problems. told. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might have some well, problems. That's not true. To begin the participation, I've been told that from well that's not true okay we can i'll get more information from imrf but that's what i, I just want to let the trustee but i don't believe that it's no, possible a statement that i discussed in the prior meeting showing what the highway commissioner's cost for one mm -hmm. for your consideration thank you when you set this up thank you Okay, so this, um, I don't expect any uh, motions or anything. It's just the information being presented to you. Any other new business? Uh, reports of elected officials? Uh, yes, we are getting ready for the next um, campaign or the next uh, election, I should say. So um, I understand there's going to be a caucus and a primary and um, gone through training and ready for the days uh, that uh, I'll need to be in here. But one thing that I think is law now, and maybe you can help me with this, um, is that we need to have a, a, a timer, or I'm sorry, what am I trying to say? A time stamp, a date stamp. Uh, that's, I guess, a new law this year that we need to, we can't just write on there and say received and this date. I, that's why I was told by the other clerks that I was told at the, um, at the um, presentations. So if we can check on that, because if we need it, we need to get it now because it's time is going to be soon. And I'll have to check in with Ralph on that, to be honest. He's the yeah, election. He's the know -all. I know. <laughs> so, right. So, um, so if that's needed, I, I will need to have one. Do you accept all the petitions for people who are running in the primary? Yes. Is that how? Yes. Do you understand. know when they have to find? I do, but I don't have the dates in front of me. I can bring in everything. October 21st to October 28th. 
and people have started to circulate petitions? They that they could start on July 30th. Um, so I'm assuming that is, well. is there anything else in the primary besides the township Democrats? No. Nothing. Not that I'm aware of. No. And the cost will be incurred by the um, by the county, and they kind of went through an extensive list of the cost. Uh, they couldn't put a number to it, but all the items that will need to be covered to have a primary. Now, if there's no one running against them, there will not be a need for a primary. But if there's a contested primary, um, you know, um, I'm just the elected, the local elected official. So I will be collecting everything. So if there's one contested office, say for the need primary, a primary. And you have to open every voting place? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then yes, they astronomical. Yeah. And they will need a full set of staff there and um and you know the checks and balances of everything you need to do. And uh printing up the ballots. And the you know getting the voting machines ready and all and that judges, right. and judges exactly full so on just for the mm -hmm. okay. so we're going to have a primary and a caucus <laughs> in in our in our township so that's quite different than any of the other townships in fact when I was uh, when I was at the meetings for it there's no other uh, township that has that. There are some that do have primaries, but there's none that have experienced both a primary and a caucus. Thank you, Claire Pollitz. Um, Highway Commissioner Young. Yeah, we're finishing up. We got the sidewalk that started. And we'll finish that up in like week or 10 days. Um, we also have the Reclamite program for the roads that were resurfaced last year. We Reclamite them this year. That should be finished this week, first part of next week. The food pantry van, which famous, I thought it was under maintenance contract. Apparently it's not. Um, but we did some repairs on that with respect to the lift gate. Oh, we also cleaned it up. So, um, Then I, I guess there's been some discussion of the township getting a forklift. I don't know why they would get a forklift. Just come down and we should train somebody to just come down and pick up ours and do what you got to do. It doesn't make sense to have two forklifts. So this is, <clears throat> that would be done well. Um, anything else, Highway Commissioner Young? No. Okay. And Assessor Trowbridge. No report. Uh, Trustee McGovern. Nothing to report, thank you. Trustee Page. Nothing to report. Okay. Um, then and that, um, just for the approval of the minutes, so we don't have to go to an executive session unless there's questions or changes to the minutes that are going to be presented because this is not your your six month audit essentially so if, unless you wanted to change something in the minutes or discuss the minutes then there's no need to go on executive session you can just approve them well this is actually it, because the last time we did this was in february you guys don't usually get a memo that we do that says whether to release them or not no well we did we did we got that Thanks. for, hey, for this meeting no no we didn't sorry just kidding uh, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm sorry. Well, Ross, okay. Ross and I spoke, and I believe this was just to approve the minutes, not necessarily to discuss releasing them or not releasing them. Oh, yes, 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 you're right. Okay, so thank you. All right, so we just so, so, yeah, right, yeah, right, right, right. I'll make a motion <laughs> to approve the minutes um, contents. Oh. Uh, from the previous executive sessions held on July 25th, 2024, May 8th, 2024, and February 14th, 2024. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee McGovern and Trustee Page. Any other discussion? And a roll call vote, please, Claire Uh Trustee McGovern? Yes. Trustee Page? Yes. Supervisor Hewitt? Yes. 
a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Trustee Page and Trustee McGovern. All in favor? Bye. Thank you. Did you say I or bye? I said bye.